Hey there, YouTubians. This is kind of going to be uh, part two for my uh, haul video today. Uh, this is the Golden Car Comics channel, and I forgot all about doing my mail haul in my last video. So I'm going to do it real quick right now. Uh, it may not be so quick because I have a great big act of kindness to put up there on the screen. Uh, but uh, since I already did a bombshell in part one, I... Uh, I'm going to just put these up here for a little bit. These are, I don't know if I've shown these before, but these are pretty cool pops. These are my sons, actually. He's a big Bruce Lee fan, being he's in martial arts, has been for eight years. But uh, he actually wanted to keep them in the box, and he said I could keep them down with my collection. So I'm just going to throw them up there for you guys to see. These are Bait exclusives. I was real happy to get them uh, directly from Bait when they first put them out. Of course, we have uh, Bruce Lee from Enter the Dragon. And then I cannot remember which Bruce Lee film this was from, and that's just awful that I don't. But anyway, there we go. A couple of Bruce Lee pops. They're not the ones with the blood spat or anything, but they're still very, very cool. My son likes them. I like them. And there they are. All right, let's get on with my mail call. going to see if we have any major tiling issues like we did with my last video that I did today. I don't know what's going on with the camera. I was doing a whole bunch of computer updates and apparently it made my camera worse. Anyway, here we go. From Midtown Comics, I started getting the Lone Ranger Green Hornet uh, comic series. Uh, they put out the first two issues. This is issue number one, Lone Ranger Green Hornet. So I just got these, so I haven't started reading them yet. This is the first variant cover for issue number one. With different drawings of the Lone Ranger, obviously. And variant cover number two. This was a retailer incentive, I do believe. But of course, it's the Green Hornet. Brett Reed. Brett Reed. There you go. Now, the reason I started getting these comics is because during an off-air discussion, uh, I started speaking with an individual. And this is Lone Ranger number two. Uh, Lone Ranger Green Hornet number two. With silver, by the way, somewhere in my house or my mom's house, silver is still running around. I've actually got the toys somewhere. But anyway, so I was having a discussion with an individual, and he told me about these books. And I thought, well, that's really cool. I wonder why they're putting them together. And then somebody said, oh, well, they're, they're related in the comic book. And I thought, how strange is that? So I actually did a little research, and it turns out that the writer for the old 1940s radio serials, like uh, The Lone Ranger and The Green Hornet, they had the same writer. And in one of the episodes of The Green Hornet radio show, Britt Reed tells his dad that he is The Green Hornet. At which time, his dad says, it's okay, son. Uh, I used to ride around with your uncle or your great uncle in Texas, and he was also a masked vigilante. And right after Britt's dad says it, they play the theme for the Lone Ranger, the William Tell Overture. So inferring that Britt Reed's great uncle was indeed the Lone Ranger. So that connection goes all, this connection here for this comic goes all the way back to the 40s. And I just thought that was really, really cool, and I wanted to share that with you guys. And here is the variant cover for issue number two. Again, issue number three is due out real soon, but I just got these in the mail, so I cannot read to, uh, wait to read them. I'm really looking forward to it. Moving on to an incredible act of kindness, I got this box in the mail yesterday, and it was heavy and I looked at the address on it and it came from OMG Old Men Gamers and I lifted the box and I was like why did you send me a big concrete block <laughs> it was so heavy but it was just full full of comic books and I mean they're awesome I wanted to start off with my favorite from what he sent me and this is Lady Death one half and I love that artwork. I just love the way she's drawn. She is such a, 
I, I think she's one of the most beautiful characters in all of comics. I really do. I mean, yeah, they draw all the heroes and heroines and villains as all busty and beautiful, and, but she is just the color, the the way they do the hair. I think truly she is one of the most beautiful characters in all of comic books. And OMG, thank you, man. I love this book. It actually comes with a certificate of authenticity that this is a Wizard Press certified Lady Death one half. I mean, how cool is that? Moving on, because this is going to be a long one. All right, we have X Men Omega. I don't even think there's a number on it, but talk about a shiny cover. We've got <laughs> Magneto and uh, Apocalypse, and it's just, yeah, that's a cool cover. I haven't looked at the dates, but I would guess that's from somewhere in the 90s. I think a lot of these are. I think he said, oh, look, shiny books. Let's send them to John. He likes shiny things. Uh, we have Ultimate Iron Man number one. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit because he sent me a lot of books. You guys have no idea. Ultimate Iron Man number two, which is really cool because I've never told you, but my son's like third or fourth favorite hero, he ranks them, is Iron Man. Uh, Ultimate Iron Man number three. And Chris sent me a little note, but he was thanking me for all my support for his channel, and I, I just always have. If you haven't subscribed to Old Man Gamers, and chances are if you're watching me, you probably are, because he's like well over 300 subs, and he's shooting to 500 with a bullet. Um, Ultimate Iron Man number four. I mean, he's just a real cool guy. We have real similar tastes, real similar hauls. He, he differs on a few things. He's more into the, the horror genre than I am. Um... Ultimate Iron Man number five. These are just cool covers. But uh, Chris is just one of the nicest guys you'll you'll ever meet on YouTube. You know, watch his channel, send him a message. You know, he's just someone nice to talk to. He's a good good guy. All right, we have Conan Zero from Dark Horse Comics. Love the art on that cover. I mean, that's just cool. I would lie to you and tell you I used to look like that in college, but what's the point? All right. Dark Horse Comics, Conan number one. And this is also Dark Horse Comics, Conan number one. But I couldn't find anywhere that said this, this was a variant cover or anything. It's just, but it's just a different cover. I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, Conan number two. Uh, not quite X-rated because the hair is covering up, covering up her nipples. So, <laughs> not quite R-rated. It's like PG-13. Very clever. Uh, Conan number three. All these are Dark Horse, by the way. And these are just, again, cool, cool covers. I mean, Conan number four. And these are all have the same box. This is a huge act of kindness here. Conan number five. Conan number six. Conan number seven. Well, you, you see how this is going here. Conan number eight. Do do do. All right. This is, and I know this is one of the titles that he reads a lot, but this is The Darkness, number 16 from Top Cow. And I can't quite read his writing, but he's got a little posty here that says, First appearance of Mag Defierce or Mag Defense. I'm not really sure, but it's a first appearance. I'm not, I'm not real familiar with this title, other than I know that he, uh, OMG reads it. But... Uh, I'm interested in finding out about that because, you know, First Prince is always cool. The Darkness number 17. The Darkness number 18. That might be a little story arc you sent me. This is really, really cool. I like this a lot. Captain America number 425. Foil cover, all shiny and everything. <laughs> Say what you want about about the foil covers. 
they're cool to look at. They might not be worth a whole lot. Or maybe this one is. I actually don't know. I'm not familiar. But it, they're cool to look at. They're just fun. You know. 30th anniversary issue of Iron Man. Iron Man number 290. Again, foil cover just sparkling and gleaming away. Fantastic Four, number 387. Sue Storm surrounded by, again, a nice metallic, I don't know, flame or something there. But look at that sparkle. It's sparkling. It's like my car when it's clean. All right. Ghost Rider, number one. God, I love that. Again, I love these covers. Uh, I wish I had, you know, uh, I actually uh, marked uh, Texiera. Uh, was actually here at Cheyenne Comic Con this past summer, and this would have been cool for him to sign. Maybe he'll be back again next year. Uh, Ghost Rider number two. Again, just great artwork on the cover there. I haven't flipped through any of these comics. I mean, I just opened the, up the box here. Uh, Ghost Rider one of six. Looks like maybe a Marvel Knights type of uh, issue. And then, just by coincidence, Lone Ranger number one. Now, again, these are all come out of the same box. These all came out of the same box. And, Chris, don't worry. I, you didn't have bags and boards. Don't sweat it. I have bags and boards. I get them by the pound. Uh, <laughs> we have Moon Knight number one. Moon Knight number two. Moon Knight number three. Moon Knight number five. Somewhere four got missed out, but that's all right. Not a big deal. But Moon Knight number five. And Moon Knight number six. Then we've got Gen 13, Chapter 4, and this is number 2. And the cool thing about this book, because you, you could actually feel that there's something in there. There's a pack of cards still in there from Wildstorm Gallery. I am so tempted to open that bad boy up and see what's in there. <laughs> I probably will. Sorry, Chris, it's not going to stay near mint. The, the, the thing of cards is probably coming out. Oh, no, I'm tempted. I might leave it in there. Um, then we have uh, Gen 13. Oh, wow, look, issue number one. This does not have a thing of cards in it. This I thought was really, really cool. Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, issue number one of a three-issue miniseries. This is back when they were still with Archie Comics. Again, loving the art on that. You know, Splinter and April and the Turtles. Cool stuff. <laughs> I got a big kick of the out of these here. Um, we've got uh, Beavis and Butthead, number one. Uh, Beavis and Butthead, Marvel Age. This is uh, issue 134. I'm guessing that's what that 134 is, is the issue number from Marvel Age. Yeah. Oh, there's 134 up there and 136 down here. Whatever. It's Beavis and Butthead. It's cool. Uh, we have Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Issue number one, Dark Horse Comics. And then some cool stuff for my son. Uh, first issue, uh, Web of Spider-Man. Obviously, that's a, it's a different incarnation there. Uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, The New Beginning. First spectacular issue from January of 1999. Ultimate Spider-Man team-up number one. You got Spidey and Wolverine. Ooh. 
Okay, these are some comics I didn't know anything about. Bullseye, uh, number one. Um, again, I believe these are Marvel Knights because they've got the MK up there. But Bullseye Greatest Hits, number one. Bullseye Greatest Hits, number two. Bullseye Greatest Hits, number three. Bullseye Greatest Hits, number four. He's having a bunch of runs. This is kind of cool. Bullseye Greatest Hits, number five. Bullseye, Bullseye's Perfect Game, Marvel Knights. Uh, this is a limited series. Uh, this is one of two. And this is two of two. I don't know. I've never read these. I'm guessing that Bullseye became a pitcher. Because let's face it, he would be an awesome pitcher. Wherever he wanted the ball to be put, that's where the ball was going to go. All right. <laughs> now, talk about your uh, sparklies. Uh, Excalibur, number 75. And this has got purple foil on it. You don't see purple foil a lot. But this is Magneto. Uh, I believe that says number one. Let's see if I can catch the light there for you. All right. Here we go. And then we have Ghost Rider 2099, number one. Because everybody has a 2099 character. Uh, this is very, very cool with the TV show out, of course. And my son's getting really into, starting to get really get into Daredevil. But we have Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, uh, number one. I don't know if that's volume two or volume three. But again, it's all foily and shiny. Yeah, cool idea. Cool idea for cover. And last and certainly not least, we have Spider-Man 2099, number one, with the red foil cover. Again, something that my son's really going to love. And that is the awesome act of kindness I got from uh, Chris, OMG, Old Man Gamers. If you haven't checked out his channel, you know, go do so. I would love to see him hit 500 subscribers, you know, within the, like the next couple weeks because he could do it. And uh, this video, because that box was so big, has now hit over 18 minutes. And I am going to say, out of here. If you haven't subscribed to Golden Car Comics, please do so. Keep an eye out for my upcoming contest videos. Thank you for my subscribers that I do have. I love each and every one of you. I appreciate you all. And, um, hey, I'm having a ball doing this. So thank you, YouTube. Thank you, supporters. Thank you, subscribers. I'm John. This is Golden Car Comics, and I am gone.